All right, Daniel starts off with Magical Musketeer, Caspar. Caspar, if a spell or trap card is played in the same column, lets you add another Magical Musket card from your deck to your hand. Only one per turn, however. And Rodolfo is going ahead and checking that out on his own. That is correct. Caspar gets you a Magical Musket card from your deck to your hand. Starfire, special summon, the level four or lower from the deck. Those two are the ones that you generally, or generally are gonna start off with. Although there are some other uh, trickier combo-centric builds that like to see Calamity and Brilliant Fusion in their starting hand so they can immediately put Mastermind's Vakiel on the field. Yeah. Ash Blossom blocks the Pot of Desires. However, the search goes through and it searches for mas yeah, Magical Musket Desperado. Yeah, destroys a face of face of card on the field. You heard him. Destroys a face of card on the field. And because there is a Magical Musketeer on the field, he can play it from his hand during either player's turn. Nice. Let's you right. just get around spell and trap removal completely. Yeah. yeah. Looks like Danielle is just going to pass now. A couple of hand traps and a trap that he can play from his hand at the ready. Start with terraforming. I'm sure that at resolution that's going to probably be answered by Drone Lockwood. I don't think he wants to Ash Blossom that here. He'd rather save it in case his opponent has a uh, gamma. Indeed. Not. Let's go. That's interesting. I think he's going to. Uh, oh, he's going to disrupt for Casper. I see. Chains drawing that, and he gets another search off of Caspar. Now that's once during each player's turn. It mm -hmm. is a trigger effect. Uh, not a quick effect, which is important because there is a counter trap in this theme. Mm. And I think it's pretty likely that he'll go get, like, get either that or the spell card cross domination. Get another negation, essentially, either of anything or of monster effects. And it looks like he has taken last stand. Yes, negates a spell or trap card. So last stand. Speller traps, cross domination, monsters, and also reduces their attack to zero. And we see Fool's Burial Goods. He can Ash Blossom this, but I don't know if he wants to. It still opens him up to getting uh, hit by Cyframe. Your Gamma. I, I don't know that I would uh, Ash Blossom this. Because unless he has something else to go with it, he's just losing a card there for now. Yeah, oh, it looks like he's going to last stand it. Oh, that's interesting. Caspar has taken a small vacation and to be read by our Good. staff. Second terraforming up next. Now he's going to get hit by Drone Lockbird. See, this is what I was talking about earlier, though. He could have used the Drone Lockbird on probably the first terraforming and then not needed to use a lot of his other cards and then probably get an additional trigger off of uh, Caspar. So. My theory is that he's trying to simplify the game here. He's mm -hmm. just trying to get as many cards out of Rodolfo's grip as possible. I see what you're saying. And he passes, and Rodolfo left the mission in, or the resort in his hand, which is very wise because he only has one monster in his graveyard to pay for, keeping it around. Yeah. Second pot of desires Ooh. here from Daniel. He's getting a lot of free cards this game. the scary things if you're Rodolfo is that you've drawn Max C and this is not a deck that does a lot of special summoning. I thought you were saying one of the scary things here. If you're Daniel, you've just banished 20 cards from your deck. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> that, that would be what I'm a little he bit did. concerned with. Less than, oh, I might have a dead Max C. Honestly, though, like every game that I resolve two Pond of Desires in, I feel pretty good because mm -hmm. I got four extra cards. I didn't even realize. So Daniel's playing Double Summon 2. I, I had not seen that mm -hmm. Magical Musket yet, but that's a that seems really good, yeah. right? Because you get an additional monster in play, you get a trigger of one of your musketeers, and then you get double triggers going. It is. That's good. Rival Rivals is good because you can do it in battle. Mm -hmm. And personally, I like Brilliant Fusion, but that's because I'm a sucker for Mastermind's Akiel, and I like to get that card on the field. I think most of the competitive belts, however, aren't going to use it. Mm -hmm. 
just because it doesn't really mesh with the rest of the theme. All the rest of them do something right then, but Zach Hill doesn't do anything until the end of your opponent's turn. And he's added Starfire to his field. Starfire is one of the special summoning cards. Summons a level 4 or lower from your deck in defense position. When something's activated, you're going to call him. Man, Daniel's hand is really good. Another Droll, Ash Blossom. Cross Domination is the Quick Play spell. And uh, Fiendish Deal is a continuous trap that makes your monsters unable to be destroyed by card effects. Pulls up, he picks up a trap. Yeah. Leaning pretty heavily on that spiral resort, which is very likely to get disrupted. Is his trap evenly matched? It looks like it might be. It is. But even if it's not even yeah, that good here, yeah. It's not good in this yeah. scenario. Luckily, Magical Musketeers gets to play a lot from the hand. So evenly matched, never too powerful against them because they'll at least have their one Musketeer after it and then still be able to play all the cards that they have during the opponent's turn. And I like how Rodolfo really, he really slammed that thing down in an unoccupied column. Like, okay, I got yeah. this. I know how this works. Looks like he's responding with the uh, Fiendish Deal. Oh, yeah. Goes ahead. He gets a search. It looks like he's playing more than 40 cards. It looks like it might be 43. 43? Fiendish Deal being a continuous, though, means it permanently occupies that zone. Yep. That's one of the challenges. So you don't really run a whole lot of Fiendish Deals. You just mm -hmm. play the one. That puts Rodolfo in a not very good spot. Yeah. Maxi and Didi Crow. The best and worst hand trap, arguably, in the Spiral deck. Didi Crow, not the best here. Yeah. It's usually just used as part of one of their combos, right? They search it with Lycris and end up special summoning it off of a Firewall Dragon so they can make an additional rank one. So even though it is probably the oldest hand trap in this deck, it's actually not used in that way. Mm. So he's going to upstart on to find another Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. So he, it looks like uh, Daniel might just have this game sort of locked up. He has enough answers for the next three turns, it looks like. And so as long as his uh, Caspar is able to keep getting in there, it's going to be a little tough for him, though, if uh, Rodolfo comes up with something big, because Caspar doesn't have a whole lot of attack points. Mm. I believe he's only 1,200. Mm. Well, he has cross-domination, right? He does have cross-domination, but he really needs another monster. Mm. So he can continue getting the triggers? Oh, yeah, he needs another monster for the triggers, but also to actually just be able to take Rodolfo out. Oh, I see what you're saying, a faster clock. Yeah, he actually needs to win the game. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Okay. An Xyz link. Xyz summon. Let's see what he chooses here. You got to be careful here because once you take your magical musketeers off the field, you can't use your muskets anymore. I haven't seen that in a long time. That's Stellar Knight, right? It's Constellar... Or Hyades? Hyades. Hyades. Boom. Oh, he can't exceed on that because. <laughs> nope. It's not a light. It's fire. See what else he's got here. What is in this extra deck? Consular Hyades, we saw. Uh, he's, he probably wanted that to go into Ptolemy M7. Nightmare Shark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phantom Knight's Break Sword. One of the Jins, Boozy Rhythm. Interesting. It, it, yeah, it looks like he doesn't have a. Uh, no, he did have a play. With which one? He could have played uh, Phantom Knight of the Break Sword. 
It looks like it might be. Yeah, DDD Stone King Darius wouldn't work because they aren't both fiends. Yeah, this can't be a shark. Uh, this can't be a shark. Artifact. Yeah, nightmare shark. Uh, this is by your card effect. I get to search for it in the deck right now. Can Ash Blossom also be used from the field that Ghost Ogre? Yes. That's interesting. Looks like Ramirez drew oh, another hand trap, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, but 1800 defense. Yeah, that that is worth something. Uh oh. <laughs> Is that ties? It's ties, but oh, I don't know yeah. that he has cards left. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is just getting silly. He's got Dante as well. There's Phantom Knight's Break Sword. Yeah. Getting a hit with Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, but got the DD Crow. That's so interesting. He set the DD Crow and not the Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Huh. I guess he, it's because he had to use it that way to get rid of something. Mm -hmm. there Daniel also just used both of his Ash Blossom and Joy Springs. Yeah, I don't know that he has. Uh, I don't know if he has any monsters left. This cast bar just has to go the distance. Uh, go ahead. He has steady hands and cross domination in his hand. Yep. Terraforming drawn for turn. He's going to check if he can activate it. I only but saw Daniel two still results. has drawn Lockbird. Yep. Shuffles it to the front of his hand. And he is ready. This is one of the strangest games I've ever seen. Yeah, it's definitely a weird one. That thing gets double summoned, but no monsters. I think we can reasonably infer that he doesn't definitely doesn't have two monsters left. Mm. Text directly for 12. 1,200 more. you got to get there three more times. 29. There's Super Agent for Rodolfo. And this time it finally works. Yeah. grab drone so that he can enable his uh, super agent in his hand. Is that going to get hit with cross domination? He's going to have to cross domination spiral drone? Is that better than cross domination the um, the uh, helix? Uh, hmm. Looks like a spell then cyclone and the monster got buried. Of ties. I think the reason you would cross domination the drone is to force them to guess. Yeah, I understand. And then maybe they miss. The, he can't beat the helix. Yeah. Yeah. It's destroying the fiendish deal, though. That's interesting. Oh, that'll get. Oh, that'll let Daniel Good. shuffle his deck if he's got anything else. And for double helix, you have to. Yeah. Uh, chain. One second, let's bring up double helix. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you, you still have to guess with double helix, right? If he gets to shuffle his deck. So yes. there's a chance that he misses. don't think he did it right. Unless he's doing it before Double Helix's effect was activated. Oh, I thought I heard the activation of Double Helix's effect. Oh, no. Still guesses right, though. And he 
still had the domination in his hand. That's interesting. And this guy's at 2,400, right? Yeah, this guy's at 2,400 now. Oh, but he can't. Uh, the Spiral Resort makes it so the opponent's monsters can't be targeted, right? By Apex? Oh, yes. Yeah, so that that's the yeah. issue with the cross domination. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit off board there. And he actually can't use. I don't think he can use Master Plan's effect because he's gone through all the resorts. He might have been better just sitting there on Helix and Master Plan. Yeah, but those stats aren't bad, right? Master Plan has large defense. Oh, no, I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I can't do yeah, yeah, yeah. Ningirsu. He needs all link monsters. <laughs> I'm going to go Gaia. Oh. Yep. There's Gaia. And this monster can be targeted, right? So cross domination also reduces the monster to zero. Uh, let's look up cross domination because okay. it's a little strange. Changing its tax defense zero also has its effects against. Yeah, okay. you thought it might yeah, need to negate the, the effect it first. Yeah, so effect. it wouldn't have worked against Guy because it doesn't have an effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been a very interesting interaction, but does not, in fact, work that way. Yeah, Daniel, I'm not sure if I would have called this X one out. I don't really know what happened towards the end of that. A lot of cards were played, and I'm not sure yeah, if the best decisions were made. But someone won. Yeah, <laughs> A Ramirez won. That was. I mean, I said it during the game, but that is one of the strangest games I've ever seen happen. Yeah. Where you have just one monster left in the deck, so you can't use ties. And you just... Hand traps everywhere. How many hand traps did we see in that game? Between, the two, of them. Between the two of them, at least eight, right? Or actually, no, at least six. Because there was two Ash Blossoms and the Droll on... Daniel's side, right? And oh, was there another one? He, he had, had two, two drolls. Okay, two so that's four. And a ghost ogre. So five. And, and then Ramirez had Crow, Crow Rodolfo. Maxi. <laughs> Rodolfo. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Crow, Crow Maxi. Ghost Ogre. Okay. Ash Blossom. Okay. That's nine. Oh boy. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of cards that just made other things not happen. Yeah. But then we saw the power of Caspar. Like yeah, no, really, really take over. Caspar. Well, I, yeah, I think also, even before we get there, like, it, this shows the weakness of hand traps in a way, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you're not able to answer just a little bit your opponent can do and you're stuck with all these hand traps, right, they, they, there has to be this balance that you meet. Mm -hmm. And I think that certain duelists are relying on, you know, oh, my initial combo goes off, oh, I'm able to stick with this one threat, and then mm -hmm. I sort of back it up with hand traps from there. But if you can't stick that initial threat, all these hand traps are like, you can't play from behind, right? right. We, we saw that a lot with Maxi in the past. Like, Maxing from behind never really did too much, right? Because you were still losing on the field. And I think that is an issue we see even more with these hand traps like Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Oh, so here's a question. Mm -hmm. Evenly matched. Yeah. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. You play it from your hand. Is it a hand trap? Is it a hand trap? You could also argue it it's very good going second, which is why the hand traps are good. Yeah, I don't know. I think evenly matches the truest of the hand traps. The real hand trap? Yeah, like it is the... Yeah, like... When, yeah, it, it it has to be, right? Delta Crow, Anti-Reverse, evenly matched, typhoon. similar, yeah. And Typhoon, that's another good one. Well, we did we saw evenly match in that game as well. Yeah, that was, so does that 10. count? Okay, then if, if do you count, count every single trap that Daniel played from his hand as a hand trap? No. No, why not? No, because those cannot actually be played from their hand on Unless their Unless you have something else? Yeah, there's nothing internal to them that does it. It's the monsters that allow that to happen. Sure. I feel like as close to internal, though, like uh, their monsters in their same archetype it's, allow them to. It's but yeah, the second I understand cousin what you're saying. of hand traps. Okay, so is the Magical Musketeer the hand trap deck? It is. Uh, the hand deck? The yeah, quick it's draw? Kind of, uh, it's, it's very... 
kind of indescribable, really. The Magical Musketeer deck, it's not like any of the other Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Yeah, yeah, no, that is definitely true. You get to play, you interact with your opponent completely from your hand during your opponent's turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, that's awesome. It's a rare thing, usually. Yeah. But with this, it's, it's everything, and I yeah. think that's part of why it's been so popular lately, is that mm -hmm. it's just a cool mechanical execution that you that's don't right. see anywhere else. Yeah, looking at side decks, do you think there's anything that we're going to see from either side? That's a good question. I don't know how many people were actually anticipating that any of the cards from Spirit Warriors would see play. Mm -hmm. So you think they didn't prepare for yeah, a deck like I don't think anybody prepared for this, and it looks like nobody actually figured out how the Six Samurai deck works. Yeah. So everybody who didn't prepare for that is safe. Yeah, I think Rodolfo's side deck is also very much what we'll see throughout this tournament where it's a bunch of trap cards, actual mm -hmm. good trap cards, right? And you replace those, like your hand traps, you replace them when you go first with these trap cards that can interact a little bit better. I we like also see the, uh, the Rieki and Dark Hole. Yeah, as additional here. cards for going second, like the evening match. I think this these last six, including the uh, Ghost Reapers, are probably what's he, what he brings in even there. What I'm interested in is the Pointer of the Red Lotus. Interesting. Yeah. That's a card that you don't see a whole lot because it's kind of got an exorbitant cost mm -hmm. attached to it. <laughs> but if you do resolve it, you can get a peek at your opponent's hand and essentially you just knock a card out of it temporarily. Yeah. That's why it costs, what, 2,000 and you have to show them your hand? Yeah. 2,000 life points and you reveal all the cards in your hand to look at your opponent's hand and select one card. Remove that card from playing it until your opponent's next end phase. Mm. Yeah. Just keeping something that they searched out of play for a turn can be enough. To, yeah, yeah. You know, make the with, with how win. with how fast the spiral deck is able to turn things around too, getting even though it's just until the next end phase, that's that's not that bad. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what cherries would do in this matchup though. Uh, I, I don't really I don't think it does anything. It no, do I think I think it's just, just for the spiral oh, mirror. Okay, I yeah. got it. I got you. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's actually not even that. We were. I was talking this, uh, talking to a lot of duels this about this last night. That Ghost Reaper and Winter Chairs just does not line up well against 99% of the field other than Spiral. Mm. It's not very good against the Pendulum deck. It's strong against ABC. It's not very good against Trickstar. It's only good against ABC in Game One though, because we're going to put in that pot of acquisitiveness. Yeah, and then get you Game Two. Well, it looks like our duelists are ready. And I see some purple and some foreheads. <laughs> over on Daniel's side. Gonna load that in, and we see that Rodolfo has a solid hand. Yeah, he has full spiral goods gas. and terraforming, but he drew spiral master plan. Does he play a second copy? No. Yeah, it can summon from your hand, can it? Uh, can he look summon from your hand? I don't believe so. I think it either adds... Adds to hand or summons from deck? Yeah. I, I think it, it takes the card from the deck and it either puts it in your hand or puts it onto the field. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So he's going to have to get a he's salt gonna... into the graveyard to summon it from the hand. Yeah. Or he can also... There's other ways you can do it, too, like with the Firewall Dragon or you discard it for one part of the combo and then bring it back with a mission. But it, it's sort of hard to do... So we'll, we'll see exactly how he wants to navigate this after drawing the master plan. Yeah, he's got foolish burial goods. Yeah. All right, so quick fix resolves. Get some gear. Yeah. And then foolish burial goods resolves. The gear was drone. The goods is going to send a mission. Yeah. It is mission assault. Mission assault can be banished from the graveyard or special summon a spiral from your hand. Yeah. And he puts a drone onto the field. Drone lets Rodolfo and only Rodolfo look at the top three cards of his opponent's deck and then rearrange them. Oh, it's a monster spell and a trap. Yeah. That doesn't happen often. Looks like he's going to arrange the monster first, then put double summon between and leave the trap there last. And then at resolution, Daniel's going to hit mm. Rodolfo with Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. That's rough. That's very rough. And he loses how many copies? One, two, only two. All right, let's see where he goes from here. Two level one monsters on the board, both machines. Yeah, Daniel making sure to look through uh, the rest of Rodolfo's extra deck so that if he draws another copy of Ghost Reaper Wearing Cherries, he knows what to call, maybe. Assuming that he's got it. He knows he has an Ingearsu, mm -hmm. which means he's probably playing the combo with Eve. Oh, he doesn't have Scapegoat. It's a little more difficult. 
Proxy Dragon is the Link Summon. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Proxy Dragon is actually one of the most misunderstood Link monsters, as opposed to what its effect actually oh, does. Oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, because it... You're, let, let's just bring it up. Because it protects anything on your field. Yeah, by sending the cards that it points to to the graveyard. By right? destroying one of the cards it points by to. By destroying. I didn't even realize it destroys it. Yeah, it I thought it, it sends it. That's why you can't use it against a lot of stuff like uh, Dark Hole, for example. Mm. Everything's being destroyed all at once, and you can't substitute the destruction of something that's already being destroyed. Which is different from the Holly Angel scenario mm. last time, where something that can't be destroyed isn't, even if the thing destroying it would be destroyed at the same time. That's Yu-Gi-Oh. Caspar gets hit by Ash Blossom this time after Desperado. Actually, no, that's Ghost Ogre. Desperado took out a card. But he still gets to search for a magical musket. Got another Caspar in hand. Pretty good. It's not surprising that it's taking a little longer with the searches. Just because this is such a new deck. Yeah. Duelists have had, what, two days to play at an actual competition yeah, so got far? Yeah, if, if even that, right? It's the 18th or 19th of today. Didn't Spirit Warriors release the 17th? Uh, it came out on Thursday at Thursday. official tournament stores. Okay, yeah, so. So Thursday and Friday, and now you're here at YCS with it. That really speaks to the confidence that many duelists have had yeah. in this deck. But there is a lot of searching, and it is difficult to know the right card to get each time. Yep. Stop scanning. Oh, spell. spell. Oh, he misses. Ooh, it's a monster. Now, Rodolfo's hand looking much weaker now. Last resort. Master plan and super agent left mm -hmm. over. Yeah. Some of the agent. Let's see if he equips it. Looks like he's just going to go battle. He's considering a link summon. Yeah, the Vox Dragon isn't really doing him a whole lot of good in that extra monster zone. Yeah, definitely not. It can't point at anything. Yeah, so he's actually just locked out still. He'll have to use it as a material if he wants to do anything. Well, we know he has Gaia. He's also got Decode Talker. No, oh, he's going to go with the Equip. And he appears to have attacked directly with both. One card in there? One card. Now Ramirez is up. So last resort, it is a monster that can, you can equip it from your hand or field. Turns into an equip card, and the monster that it is equipped to cannot be targeted by card effects and can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Works on any spiral monster. There are a lot of the cards in there, especially the gears, that only work specifically with Super Agent. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's the last resort, and you gotta yeah. take anybody you can get in that power armor. That's Kid Brave. Kid Brave lets you discard a magical musket card to draw two cards. Zyres is up next. Ten banished. Yeah. Draws two. Looks like Maxi and is that Say another Desires. I thought you lost Stand. Well, you got a Desires from something. <laughs> That's definitely the case. Mm. You can really use that one copy of Steady Hands, though. The Imp 
imposing 1900 attack points of Spiral Super Agent mm -hmm. are causing some issues for the 1600 attack Kid Brave. Here's an interesting story. Hmm. Did you know that Spiral Super Agent nearly had 1,600 attack points instead of 1,900? I did not know that. The trade-off for it was going to be that Spiral Super Agent would destroy Spiral Trap no matter how he was summoned. Oh, man. So Call of the Haunted, Pendulum Summoning, anything of that yeah. would have let him destroy Spiral Trap. Hmm. That was a little too much for him. And in the end, he got 300 more points of attack power but he was only able to destroy things off being summoned by a spiral card. All right. But doesn't, of course, include himself, which is generally the best way to summon him. Another copy of Pot Eyes. Is, man, both games just banishing 20 cards. I feel like he almost worked himself into a poor position last game because of that. Mm. So I'm interested as to why he wanted to play the second copy because it already seemed like he was ahead. But I guess a lot of his cards were just reactive cards and yeah. not anything that could deal with the... Uh... Yeah, he's looking for, like, the Desperados, right? Just to destroy I this. guess, yeah. Or make your guy zero or something I th like I that. I think he's looking for monsters. Like, more more magical musketeers because he already has, um, like, Last Stand and a few other things, right? So, like, he, worst case scenario, he draws another monster. He can trade with the, the Kid Brave, right? Uh, crash into the Super Agent and then... Oh, no, Super Agent is 1,900. See, you're, you're confusing me right yeah. now, Jerome, making me think now suddenly the Super Agent has 1,600 <laughs> that he can crash with Kid Brave. It's so real, you can feel oh, it. Oh, yeah. It was real for about a month. <laughs> He's got Starfire to the field, and Starfire summons Doc from the field, and Doc can get cards back from the graveyard. I'm gonna go ahead and activate. Guess his monster. He is correct. Daniel responds with Maxi. So he gets to draw that monster that was revealed. So he's got the second winter cherries here. Yep. And what's the condition on it? Same or more monsters? Um, I believe it's more. Your opponent has to have more than you. He loses both of his monsters to the super agents. And now he's reveal Baguska. Taking out Baguska. Yeah. A little. At 38, I'm at 78. A terribly tired tapir. We'll have to wait to awaken another day. Mm. And it's kind of amazing that after all those searches and draws, Ramirez didn't have any of his cards that could interact during battle. Yeah. Looks like he's in quite severe trouble, actually. <laughs> Should be pretty amazing for Rodolfo if he can pull this one out after losing yeah, double, double helix, helix on the first turn, right? And drawing master plan. Takes 19. He can't take another hit from Super Agent. Picks up Roll and Lockbird. That's not going to do it. And yeah. Rodolfo. Okay, so is that classified as stealing one? Or eking or whatever eking word I use. Yeah, 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 that, 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 that definitely word felt word. like some definite eekage. <laughs> <laughs> six out of ten on the eek scale. Really? Just six? Uh, are you okay, okay. Maybe, maybe a seven or eight. Seven. Yeah, yeah. At least a seven. Yeah. All right, let's look at side decks one more time. So now Rodolfo will be going second. So he can bring in maybe Twin Twisters. And Twin Twister actually does not seem it's, very it's good against that deck at all. Nope. Twin Twister doesn't seem that good. Raigeki and Darkhole, 
maybe. Uh, I can't dark all, all right. Uh, you get to clear the monsters as they don't continue getting triggers and things like that? Yeah, the thing with uh, Fiendish Deal is mm -hmm. that they only play one of it. Okay. And if they don't actively search it out and put it onto the field early, mm -hmm. you have this period of time where you just get them with Regeki and Dark Hole, mm. and they might just never draw another monster. Mm. And that's really the key here, is if you can get the monster off the field, the deck doesn't do anything, because none of the cards can be played. He's still playing, he's not even playing a full 12 monsters, a full 12 Magical Musketeers. He's only got 11. Two Docks, three Kid Brave, Casper, Starfar. Very interesting. No Calamity, which really boggles my mind because one of the ways you beat this deck is by killing all the monsters. Yeah. So if you have one monster that you can bring out and turn it into another monster instead mm -hmm. of just Starfire, it seems good to me. I'd probably play at least one copy of Calamity, even if I'm not trying any of the tricky combo stuff. But on his side, oh, well, he's going first now. I could put in an Imperial Order. That doesn't seem that bad. Rivalry of Warlords, because there's a mismatch between Warriors, Spellcaster, and Machine. Maybe. And yeah, Mac. also not the worst. All his cards are Fiends, though, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Other than that, he's going first, so I'm not really expecting evenly matched here. Yeah, I, I think he might just slim on some of the hand traps and put in just real traps, like we were talking about hand before, traps. yeah. It's, you're just basically upgrading your card quality, right? And, like, not taking away what your, your core strategy is trying to do. All right, well, whatever he's done, he has made his decision. Rodolfo's still working on it. Going second. I think it's just evenly matched for Yaki Darkhold. So the rest of these are Solemns, which you might never get a chance to play. Mm. And Ghost Reaper, which is not useful. I don't know. Maybe Torrential maybe you just do good. put in the, the Solemn cards, though, like going second, because how, how good are all these hand traps against Magical Musketeers? Mm. Right? Like, may, maybe you just let them do their thing turn one, and then you set your trap cards turn two, you know, like try to clear the monster, set yeah. some trap cards, and just try to interact. Like, Psalm striking one of their monsters when it triggers doesn't seem that bad. Because every game we've seen, right, like, uh, Daniel has just been low on monsters. And I mm, think any true. strike probably would have cut him off. So I actually think Psalm strike is probably great against the Musketeer deck. And just because we're so uh, focused on these, you know, turn ones, oh, we need our hand traps going second, like, Maybe this just isn't that strategy, but that could be why Magical Musketeers is such a good pick for this weekend. Because it's just better against these hand traps than the other decks. That's true. you got to watch out, though, still for the Fiendish deal. Mm. You'd still be able to negate the effects, but the monster would live. Okay. And that would be really unpleasant. But again, that's just, you know, a card they play one of. Yeah. And if that changes after this weekend, if the Magical Musketeer players find that they just keep getting blasted by all of these removal cards, we'll see. All right, it looks like we're gonna start yeah, things off. Ready to go. Oh, there's a nice little bit of balance. You got monsters, spell, and trap. Yeah, there's rivalry. But it doesn't look like there is any like starter spell or trap right to get his guys going. Mm, not on his own turn. Mm. He's got Looks like he's got Starfire, though. As soon as we get that hand updated, we'll bring it up. Yeah, he's got to be careful where, where he plays his cards here. Mm -hmm. Oh, because of the continuous to, cards, yeah. He's going to lose one zone to the rivalry of Warlords, but he also probably wants to set okay. something like the Cosmic Cyclone. Like right behind it. In whatever zone he's going to summon the monster off Starfire to. Oh, he's got Fiendish Deal in his hand. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Let's see when he activates the Fiendish Deal. What is that spell card? Mm -hmm. Is that Twin Twister? Or maybe not. Oh, there's... Okay, there's the deal. Let's Starfire summon. And now he's 
it's going to grab Caspar. And the trick is to make sure you put Caspar in the same column as a card you're going to play. A Cosmic Cyclone. I don't... Oh, well, I think it's right behind it's be Oh, so he's going to trigger like this. It. Hmm. How do you feel about doing that preemptively? You know, I'm not a fan on the rivalry part. Yeah, I would want I. them to commit their cards to the field first. Yeah, and right. You, you gain your anything. advantage off of it. So this way now, if um, if Rodolfo just hasn't answered the rivalry of warlords, right? Like he still has all of his cards that he maybe would have lost a couple of. His play would have gotten disrupted, right? Whereas now this isn't disruption. This is prevention. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like he's drawn the master plan again. Yeah, and it looks like he drew the assault mission. Oh, he had a ghost over. Yeah, he could use that on Starfire. I don't know. Would how that much be it would good help? Because it, it well, it, he would last deals, right? So does it even? It wouldn't do anything. Or a fiendish deal? Oh, that's right. That was yeah. the activated card. Was, was the fiendish deal? Yeah, yeah couldn't do it. Yes, yeah, ghost ogre just wouldn't have done much of anything. And this is aggressive too. A thousand take out utility wire, and now he's going to discard to draw two. Mm. Yeah, it is uh, definitively thinking time here. of the Brethren on Kid Brave. Pay 2,000. Kid Brave is level 3. We haven't seen Ties of the Brethren in quite a while. No. Right? Like, I think the last time I saw it was when we saw... Um, um, oh, what event was it? Was it maybe YCS Minneapolis or something? It was Aaron Furman made the top 4 with a Ties of the Brethren Magic Spectre deck. I feel like that was the last time we really saw Ties of the Brethren do... So what have he's, a big tournament <laughs> impact, but what he's trying to do here yeah. is summon a I monster that, that, to the yeah. zone yeah. where he summoned a monster to. That would be much more powerful. Okay. I wasn't sure. That's why, like. Yeah, that's that's not gonna work. Yeah, it's not happening. It's clever. It's a really good idea, but that's not quite how it works. Yeah. And with five monsters out, Rodolfo's Raigeki would look great right now, but the the fiendish deal is still out there. Mm -hmm. So ties with the brethren. That prevents what special summoning for the rest of the turn and no battle phase or no battle damage. I get it mixed up with card of demise a lot. Yeah, let's figure that out really quick. Yeah, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn the card's activated. Okay. But yeah, this still looks like more than enough for Daniel to take things back the following turn. Mm, foolish burial goods. Activates in the same column as Starfire, which is smart because he has no more space to summon monsters. Mm. sends Spiral Mission Rescue to the graveyard. That's a card that ends. Did he take Assault out of his deck? He, he drew it, remember? Oh, he's just right. He drew it. It's face yeah. down. Oh, that's rough. got both the Steady Hands and Desperado and Cross Domination. Oh, wow. I got a bad feeling about this for Rodolfo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, five monsters plus a rivalry plus cards to play. Mm. And a card that just prevents his monsters from being destroyed. Seems like that could be enough to win. Steady Hands is going to double up Starfire. <laughs> Anyways, uh, effect. <laughs> Looks like he'll double Starfire and then get the effect of Caspar. That's not a minus one, but... <laughs> You know, we just activate the wrong card sometimes, and it just happens, but, eh. It's whatever. Oh, wait, did he just cross-domination himself? <laughs> it looked like it. Hang on, something went horribly wrong here. Yeah, he uh, definitely meant to steady hands, and rather oh. activated cross-domination. Oh, no. Yeah, that was pretty bad. That is the danger of being this far ahead. Yeah. The danger of all your spells being so shiny and quick play. I mean, they're different rarities, though, right? Uh, Cross Domination is a secret. Steady Hands is a super. Uh, super isn't yeah, that? it is. No, I mean, the good news is, I guess he could still use the steady hands. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to look more on stream now. Watch. Because it would turn, <laughs> it would turn the attack and defense of Starfire to double the original, not double whatever it is right now. What's going on? Huh? I thought you were going to buy Starfire. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's smart, because it's a super I don't want to pop it, right? And this is, uh, I believe that's DDD Stone King Darius. That's a card we should bring up. I'll explain to my friends later. This is an interesting <laughs> one. Uh, I see. So it's usually the second effect, right? Like, because he's not using any dark contracts or anything like that. Right. Even though it's a fiendish deal, it's not quite a dark contract, mm -hmm. huh? It's not a little less binding. Quite the same. <laughs> You don't have to cheat your way out of the yeah. fiendish deal. You actually just want to keep it, because otherwise you'll explode, as opposed to dark contracts, which constantly make bad things happen to you while they're on the field. See, my friends are going to be like, why'd you do that? I'll be like, I was playing smart. I played out of, like, that being a super agent. You know, you probably would have flipped it next, but that turn, but... <laughs> Safety precautions, man. Safety precautions. Well, uh, and then 16. He still manages to get plenty of damage in. Yep. Yeah, he yeah. touched the dog. Uh, pass turn. Yeah. Plays back to Rodolfo. Draws a drawn Lockbird. He takes yeah. Not great. Well, the Rieki can do something now. Uh, it can, can take out Stone Card. Darius. <laughs> yeah, he took 16. Yeki is activated in the same column as Starfire. Yeah. Okay. All right, and time has now run out in the round. So those extra life points could be a bit of a problem for Daniel. Yeah, definitely. But Rodolfo I think he has out. enough monsters where it's going to be very hard for Rodolfo to stall out, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder why he didn't just put the mission on the field earlier in the game because it self-destructs after three turns right like mm -hmm. all good secret missions yeah and then he maybe would have been able to use it by now yeah so it's a monster in another spell or trap and that'll do it you gotta get some attacks in though yeah still has steady hands, right? He does. Yeah, so he can probably make up some amount of damage. Steady hands can't attack directly. Oh, unfortunate. It's good for clearing out the monsters, especially the, you know, beefy defense monsters. Mm -hmm. C summons again. This time. Was a rhythm. 
Blues who give them, I believe, doubles attack. It's either attacks twice or doubles attack. Uh, this one, I think, is the one that doubles during damage. Yeah, during the damage step, when a Jin exceeds monster you control is attacking the opponent's monster. So you can take itself to 3,000. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little strange, though, because I feel like he's just taking damage off his own board. Yeah, that is... Well, it flips before he would need to activate its effect, right? So correct. Twelve and bits thirteen. He activates it anyway. Twenty-four. It's my thirty-two, right? Twenty-four, thirty-four. Thirty-four. You're thirty-four. 34. One card face down. He's got Desperado and does he also have the last resort or last stand? Fine Sarah for me. He's gonna go ahead and flip Imperial Order. We did indeed side in the Imperial Order. Yeah, this is probably enough, though. It should be. If he doesn't have a monster, he'll get it now. Yeah. It should be 12, 13. Oh. Taxes everything. Yeah, and for a second enough. I got really scared because I was like, oh, wait, why are you normal summoning? He could have Torrential Tribute yeah, like you I have it, but 